I think there's better dance moves happening at VBS than that, but I guess we'll see. Hey, it's a good day to be at church. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm glad you sat next to me. Turn to the neighbor you just ignored and say, you should be glad you sat next to me. It's a good day as we're continuing in our Genesis series. And if you have your Bible this morning, go ahead and turn to Genesis chapter 37. Come on, Genesis 37. We get excited about reading the Word of God. We'll be there in just a moment. I want to know, how many remember being a kid and having dreams of the future, of what the future would look like, what you'd do for a job? Great, four people had a dream of the future. The rest of you guys, dreamless. Come on, how many remember having dreams of the future? My wife and I were talking as I was talking through this sermon with her, and this is going to tell you about the age range that I am, because I remember playing a game when I was like in middle school called MASH. Anybody remember that game? So we're like, I remember watching the show called MASH. That tells me how old you are. The game MASH is a little different. You'd like write out M-A-S-H, mansion, apartment, some of you shaking your shack, house, and you go through and you'd like write different people's names down, different jobs that you would have, how many kids you would have, and you'd like do a number. You know what I'm talking about, Ella? Did you play this game? Yeah, I see people shaking their head. And you'd go through, you know what I'm talking about, and you would mark it off, and it's like, this is what my future is. I'm gonna marry Sarah, and we're gonna live in a shack, and we're gonna have 14 kids, and I'm gonna work as a plumber. And that's how you found out what your future was gonna be. But we have dreams of the future, all sorts of dreams. When you're younger, you have dreams of what you'll be, of where you'll live, of who your family will be. I remember being a kid and, and growing up, and how many remember back in the day when Quick Trip would have like the 39 cent drinks in the summertime? That was the best, right? 39 cent drinks. I remember being a kid and my parents would take me to Quick Trip in the summer and I would get that, that slushy, that giant slushy. And I thought, man, this slushy is the best. And growing up as a little kid, my dream job was like, man, I want to work at Quick Trip so that I can have slushies all day, every day. Like the dream job as a kid was like the slushy tester. Like that's me. That's the dream job, right? Then you grow up a little bit and remember wanting to be a baseball player and remember wanting to have a big house. I remember wanting to have a Jeep Wrangler, having all these dreams of like, this is what I want to have and this is what I want my future to be. Come on, everybody in the room, shout out on the count of three what you wanted your dream job to be. One, two, three. Great, now everybody knows what your dream job was. They know if you made your dreams or if you failed at your dreams. But there's dreams, we have dreams that we think up and ideas that we have and today as we jump into this story in Genesis 37, we see this guy named Joseph and he is a key character, many people's favorite character uh, in the Bible. But we see the story of Joseph and Joseph uh, had this dream. And he had this dream uh, and he shares it with his brothers and we'll pick it up in Genesis chapter 37 verse three. It says, now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons because he had been born to him in his old age, and he made an ornate robe for him. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Joseph had a dream, and when he told his brothers, they hated him all the more. So we see Joseph, he, he has this dream. He shares it with his brothers, and they hated him for it. Let me remind some people today that you might get a God dream. You might have a big dream, a big vision, and just because it's a, a God dream doesn't mean everybody's gonna go fund you. Doesn't mean everybody's gonna jump on board. I was talking with Pastor Weaver this week when he started New Hope, and there were people that you would have thought would have encouraged him in it that were tearing him down, that were telling him he couldn't do it. Just because it's a God dream doesn't mean everybody's on board. Just because it's a God dream, there's such thing as sharing information too early. There's such thing as sharing too much information. There's such thing as, as posting too much. And, and we see this moment where as I look at this story and I almost think like Joseph shared too much. Joseph was immature. Joseph, jo, Joseph was insensitive with what he was doing with this material. But we see that Joseph, he, he had a dream. And I today want to encourage some people who have a God dream. Some people who maybe have had a God dream and you've forgotten about the God dream. Some people today who maybe want a God dream and you wanna see God do something in your life. And I believe today will be a day that encourages many. I believe today will be a day that motivates some because God's got a plan for you. And if you're taking notes this morning because note takers are world changers, the title's very encouraging and it says, stop following your dreams. Turn to your neighbor and say, stop following your dreams. Someone just heard their mom tell them for the first time ever, stop following your dreams. And they're like, oh my goodness, mom, 
Stop following your dreams. The Bible says that when Joseph was 17 years old, he has this dream and he shares it with his brothers. And it says that his brothers hated him all the more for it. Everyone say all the more. All the more. This tells us that they already hated him. They already had a problem with him. Why did they hate him? They hated Joseph because he was different. What I want you to see this morning is that a God dream makes us different. It makes you different. It makes you stand out. They hated him because he was different. He wasn't just different because of his dreams and his aspirations. Joseph was different because he had a different mother. He was literally a brother from another mother for them. We know that they they shared the same father, Jacob, whose name turns to Israel, and he has these 12 sons, the 12 tribes, but his mother was different. His mother was Rachel. Maybe you remember when we were going through this series and there was Rachel and there was Leah and Rachel was the beautiful one and and Rachel was the one that that Jacob worked for 14 years to be able to marry. It says that that Rachel was his favorite wife. Marin, you're my favorite wife. (laughs) Just to clarify, my only wife. Someone's like, oh, it's one of those churches. No, it's not one of those churches. (laughs) But it was his favorite wife and she has a son and what do you know, it becomes his favorite son. I won't ask the parents in here to raise their hand if they have a favorite child, but I'll ask the children in here. Who in the room would say that you're the favorite child in your family? Anybody in the room say you're the favorite child? Okay, there it is, the truth's out. But he was the favorite and and he had special treatment and he got this special robe, this special coat, a Louis Vuitton coat that he was wearing and he was rocking this coat and his brothers hated him. They hated his coat. They hated him because he's different. A dream makes you different. Say it's different. Come on, say it's different. It's different. But what I love in the story is that we see that that Joseph, even though he was different, Joseph, even though this coat was different than everything that his brothers were wearing, Joseph still had courage to wear the coat. Joseph wasn't ashamed of the favor that came from his father. Joseph wasn't ashamed of the gift that came from his father. I wonder today if there's anyone in the room who's unashamed to wear the coat, who's unashamed of the favor that comes from our father, who's unashamed of the gifts that come from our father. Joseph wasn't ashamed. Joseph understood this is a little different, but, but I'm unashamed to wear this because today our world needs some Christians who are unashamed of our father, who are unashamed of the favor that comes from him who are unashamed that I might look a little different. I wanna encourage someone today that there's been a God dream, that there's a purpose, that there's a calling that's been placed on your life and it looks a little bit different and the world might try to put it down but I wanna remind you today that there's purpose in the potential that he has placed on you. There's purpose. There's a God dream and, and he's called you to it and it looks a little different and the world wants to tell you, keep the coat in the closet. Don't look different. But today I wanna remind you that that we're different. When we follow Jesus, we're different. And a God dream, it makes us different. A God dream will make you talk different, walk different, post different, respond different, act different. It makes us different. Turn your neighbor and say, I'm different. Turn to the neighbor that you know is different and say, you're different. (laughs) It's different. Find that many times we first fear what's different. We reject what's different. I don't know if you've heard of this band before. I I was looking it up and I I found this band called The Beatles. (laughs) Who got rejected from the first record deal because it was a little different. Maybe you've heard of someone, he goes by The Goat, his name's Michael Jordan. If you say LeBron's The Goat, you can leave. I'm just playing, you can stay, we'll pray for you later. (laughs) But Michael Jordan played a little different didn't make the cut for his high school team. Many times we reject what's different, we fear what's different. I was was looking and I found uh, a study of a president, uh, President Garfield, who was assassinated. I don't know if you know the story of President Garfield getting assassinated, he was shot twice. But they found that him getting shot was not what killed him, but his doctor at the time rejected, it was called Lister's germ theory. And it was the idea that germs and and bacteria existed on objects, existed on us, and and it proposed the idea of disinfecting things. But his doctor at the time rejected this new theory. 
So when President Garfield got shot, he got shot on the floor and it said that it was a manure stained floor and the doctor got down without sanitizing his hands or the objects and started digging into him to get the bullet out of him. And for many days, many weeks, it went on that he rejected this idea of Lister's germ theory because it was a little different than what he had thought before. They determined that he didn't die from the gunshot, he died from the disease that came later. We reject things that are new, we, we fear things that are new. This is why in America for so long there was racism problems, because it was different. This is why they crucified Jesus, because he was different. No one had ever been fully God and fully man before. No one else had was 100% grace and 100% truth. He was different. We are called to be different. We're different. A, a God dream, it makes us different. We look different than the world. It makes us different. In Romans it says, do not conform to the patterns of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The patterns of this world, what is that? It's the same, the same over and over and over again. Don't look like the world, but be different. Be transformed. Don't be ashamed to wear the coat. Don't be ashamed of the gift that God has given you. It might look different, but God's given it to you for a purpose. I think growing up and learning this story, this classic Sunday school story of Joseph, I think the, the thought of Joseph is it's a story of perseverance. Like Joseph has this dream, and he went through some difficult things and he went through some hard things, but Joseph never stopped following his dreams and you should never stop following your dreams and you should just always, but I don't see when I read this story anything that says that Joseph followed his dreams. But what we see and what we're gonna see over the next couple of weeks as we continue to go through this book is that it says one thing over and over and over again. It says the Lord was with Joseph. I wanna encourage someone today that the Lord is with you. He's with you. We see the Lord was with Joseph with his father. His Lord was, the Lord was with Joseph when he was in the pit, when he went to Potiphar's, when he was in prison, when he was in the palace. The Lord was with Joseph. You need to be reminded today that the Lord is with you, not just in the mountaintops, but he's with you in the valleys. He's with you. He walks with you. The Lord is my shepherd, he, he leads me through it. As we a lot of times think that if I'm following God, I'm gonna avoid it, but we go through it. The Lord was with Joseph in every single time that we see Joseph in the story, the Lord was with him. The Lord was with him, he was, he was leading him and guiding him. I love the song, we're gonna sing it here in just a few moments when we respond, Waymaker, that, that when I don't feel it, when I don't see it, he is still with me. He is still working. Anybody thankful today that it's not about what I can do, it's not about my own abilities, that I don't have to make it through on my own, but the Lord is with me. Come on, are we thankful for that this morning? He's with us. The Lord was with Joseph. Say he was with him. This story of Joseph, it's not about getting a dream and, and holding on to a dream like well, if your mom told you that you're gonna be the next Elvis Presley, then you just keep on singing and you just keep on going and you tune out all the haters because they don't know what they're talking about. Well, maybe your mom loved you too much to tell you you're not good at singing. I think sometimes we get these dreams and we think, well, because I dreamt it up, now God's obligated to bless it. But nowhere in this story, I wanna show you, nowhere in this story does Joseph ask God for a dream. Joseph doesn't like create this vision board and go, okay God, here it is, now I want you to bless it. That doesn't happen. Although it's good to make a plan and, and to have plans for the future, this is not what God wants is for us to give him our dream and then him to say, okay, I'm gonna bless it. But we see that Joseph, he just kept on following God. He kept on following, he kept his eyes on him. Joseph, he, he didn't follow his dreams. So this morning I wanna talk to you about stop following your dreams, we can't just follow our dreams. We have to be very careful because what we see is that a dream can very quickly become a distraction. Joseph, he, he gets this dream from God and I just have this mental image that he, he wakes up and he, he looks out and he, he sees his brothers out there and he's like, oh, I had this dream, I need to go tell my brothers and he runs out to the field where his brothers are working. His father sent him out there and he's got his coat on and he walks up, he's like, hey guys, I had a dream. Like, Joseph, we hate you. 
and we hate that coat. And I don't know what your dream is, but I hate your dream too. He's like, no, 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 listen, you had the, we all had this wheat and your wheat started bowing down to my wheat. Isn't that awesome? No, it's not awesome, Joseph. We hate that dream. But listen, listen, listen. I had another dream. There were 11 stars and a sun and a moon and they all bowed down to me. Isn't that one awesome? I hate that dream, Joseph. They hated it so much that they came up with a plan to kill him. If it wasn't for Reuben, who came up with the bright idea, like, let's at least sell him and make some money off of him, Joseph would have died. But as I read this story, I look at this, this moment where Joseph begins to share with his brothers this information that, to me, it seems immature for him to share it with them. To me, it seems insensitive, like, Joseph, you should have read the room that they already hated you, and now you're sharing this. To me, that's what I think, but what I want to encourage you with this morning is that even in that moment, God uses Joseph's dream and him maybe sharing it prematurely with his brothers as motivation for them to push him into a pit, which then God uses for him to go into slavery, where he ends up in Pharaoh's palace. And he, but he never would have been in Pharaoh's palace if he hadn't gone to prison, and he never would have been in prison if he wasn't in Potiphar's house. He never would have been in Potiphar's house if he wasn't in slavery. Never would have been in slavery if he wasn't thrown into a pit. Never would have been in a pit if he didn't wear the coat. This is why I want to encourage you this morning. Don't leave the coat in the closet. Don't hide the dreams. Don't hide the differences that, that you have that God's placed on you to a bunch of people who don't like you anyways. God has a plan and God has a purpose and God has created you with different skills and talents and abilities to be used for a, a, a specific time and purpose. And we have to be bold with what God's called us to do. We have to be bold with the dream that he's placed in our hearts. So Joseph, he has this dream. Joseph tells his brothers and he, he, gets, thrown into, into, he gets thrown into slavery. And I just wanna encourage some people today to be reminded that it's okay to be different. We don't wanna be different just to be different. There's nothing different about being different to be different. That's not different, that's just annoying. But we're different because of our values. We're not just different in style, we're different in substance. We're different in our calling. We're different in our purpose. I don't just have the dreams that everyone else has of someday I hope to get really rich and have all these nice things on this earth, but my dreams, they have substance to them. My dreams, they make a difference in this world. My dreams are not just what social media tells me I should dream for. My dreams are what God has called me to. My dreams aren't just what's gonna make me happy, what I think is gonna make me happy. My dreams are, are following God. And I know that that leads to joy. Like we've talked about Jesus, others, you have to follow Jesus first. It's not about myself. Joseph, he has these dreams. And all along I used to think, well, Joseph, he, he followed his dreams. And if you just keep on following your dreams, then you're gonna get there. But what I see in this story is that Joseph doesn't follow his dreams, but it's the other way around. The dreams follow Joseph. So watch this. I don't follow my dreams. I follow Jesus, and when I follow Jesus, the dreams, they follow me. I follow Jesus. I don't need to follow what I want. I don't need to follow my desires. I follow Jesus, and the dreams, they followed Joseph into Potiphar's house, into prison, into Pharaoh's house. The dreams, they followed Joseph, and, and I think that there's many times, like in Joseph's story, as you see, he gets put into slavery, he gets put into prison. There's many times that I think many people in the room today, as you would look at your story, you would say, there was moments in your story that were setbacks. You had a dream and idea for your life, and there were moments in your life that seemed like there was these problems, and seemed like there were these accidents, and, and it seemed like, well, this is never, I'm never gonna see that dream come true, and we have an idea of what that dream's supposed to look like, but maybe there's some people in the room today, and you'd look at your life, and you'd say, I'm living in the dream. This isn't what I thought it was gonna be, but I know this is what God wants it to be. And the things that I was once calling a setback, God has been using for a setup. Let that encourage some people today that maybe you are on the other side, but maybe there's some people who are going through it right now and you're calling something a setback, you're calling something a problem and God's saying, I'm just gonna use that to set you up. And he sets him up and we see that a dream from God, it's, it's a big thing, but for many of us, a dream, it, it can become a distraction because all of, all of a sudden for some of us, 
we see the dream and we say, well, that's what I am gonna be when I grow up. That's what I'm gonna do. So I've got to try to do that. And we come up with our plan on our own of how we're gonna fulfill the dreams. I remind of the story of Abraham and Sarah. They get this promise. They have this dream to have a child. And time goes by and it goes by and it goes by. You remember the story and they don't have a child, don't have a child, don't have a child. So they come up with a plan to fulfill the dream on their own and Abraham sleeps with Hagar. We know that this leads to problems. They tried to fulfill the dream on their own and it led to a problem. But then later, when Abraham is 99, Sarah's 89, the Lord shows up and he says, this time next year, you're gonna have a child. And it says that Sarah laughed. Can I encourage you this morning that sometimes a dream from God is laughable? It seems like that's impossible. They tried to do it on their own and they found out that I make the mistakes, that, that I always mess up when I try to fulfill my dreams on my own. Today you guys saw on the announcement video a guy named Ron, he's interning with us this, this summer and I, Ron and I were talking as he was, you can come on up Ron, as, as we were working and I was preparing this sermon and I wanted Ron to just share briefly his story of him following his dreams. Um, so just listen in as Ron shares his story of following his dreams this morning. So my dream since I was a little, little boy was to, to play in the NBA. And uh, the passion that I had for it was just unwaverable and I chased it. I chased it long and hard, practiced day in and day out, countless nights, countless early mornings trying to make this dream come true. And in the pursuit of this dream, it, it started to crush me, the, the weight of having to fulfill it on my own, through my own skills, made me very uh, fearful of my step, of how I would move and how I would play and it, and it crippled me, truly, to the point I could've been, couldn't even finish out my senior year of, of basketball. I was so angry because I thought that this passion that I had inside of me was, had to be from God and I, I prayed for him to bless my dream but he never did. And that made me very bitter and very angry. And then one day, while I was, I was reading my Bible, again, very distraught from what has been taking place, a verse that came to my mind time and time again was, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you, and plans to give you a hope in the future. And when it was only when I quit my dream, when I put it down, when I laid it down at the altar that God continued to bless my life. And as I started to chase him, chase my relationship with him, he truly changed my heart and softened his, my heart to his calling. And once I started to hear his call, I knew I had to go. I knew I had to chase him with all my heart and with all my being. Right now, I'm, I'm interning at my church and I get to serve the people that I love and get to serve the God that I love. And through that, it just showed me that the same talents that I thought were used to glorify me and my name is now being used to glorify him and his people. And then the dream that I had in my heart had completely shifted. And now this is the dream, to love and to be a servant to the Most High. One of the things that would make me always a little bit insecure was when people would ask, but Ron, like, what are you gonna do with it? Are you gonna go to Bible college? Do you know exactly what God's calling for me? And I used to think to myself, man, I think that might be an important thing to know. But that doesn't matter. I realize when God calls you, that's all you need to know. That his plans are set apart. And that when the, when the master calls his servant, as a servant, you're just called to be obedient. God has kept me this entire time in his presence with, with his grace. And he has not failed me, not failed me once. And I know that our God will not fail us all. Ron and his family have come here since, how old were you, Ron, third grade? Something like that. I've watched Ron grow up all those years and all the Wednesday nights that I had to like remind him, Ron, you're here for church, let's leave the gym now, like it's time to go to service. <laughs> and the conversations that I had with him and the dreams that he had and the things he was pursuing and what he didn't share with you is 
one of the things that's happening now here is there's something that some students started called the NHBL, the New Hope Basketball League. And many Saturday nights, we've got 40 or 50 unchurched kids showing up to our gym to play basketball. And Ron, with those students, is using the dream that God had where he thought it was to play in the NBA. He thought it was to do this thing, and now it's looking at it going, this is the dream. This is what God's called me for. In the story of Joseph, we see he has this dream, and it's two decades later before he sees the dream happen. And what I see in this story of Joseph is something that I wanted to remind you of today is that God works many things out in the dark room. It's easy for us to, in an iPhone world today, take a picture and swipe and put a filter on it and post it. And from the time I took a picture to the time I posted it, it was 30 seconds. But if you've ever gone to a professional, you find that a professional doesn't take a picture and post it right away. A professional takes the picture and they take it and they edit it, they work on it. They're working with film, they take it to a dark room. And I wonder today, there's some people who maybe you're living in the dark room right now. Or maybe you, you thought there was this dream and you thought there was this purpose, you thought there was this plan, but right now it doesn't seem to make sense. You thought that your family was gonna look a certain way, you thought that your kids were gonna respond a certain way, you thought your grandkids were gonna be living a certain way, and right now you're looking at it and you're saying, God, where are you in this? But let me remind you that God works it out in the dark room that he develops it in the dark room, that, that if we could take the negatives and give them over to the professional, he's gonna take the negatives and he's gonna turn it into something that's beautiful. So here's Joseph and he's in Pharaoh's palace and he's distributing food to that nation and surrounding nations. When all of a sudden his brothers walk in and they bow down and he goes, this is the dream. This looks a little different than what I dreamt of, but this is the dream. They're bowing down to me and Joseph, he has this realization where if you don't hear anything else, I want you to hear this right now. He sees them bow down and he recognizes, I'm at the center of this dream, but it's not for status, it's for service. It's to serve. It's not just about making me this big shot. It's about, just, it's about me serving them. Man, we need to be people who serve. Jesus says, if you wanna be my disciple, deny yourself and follow me. He says, follow me. What does Jesus do? He didn't come into the world to be served, but to serve. We serve. Man, I wonder today, what's that God dream that God's placed on your heart? As I was praying this morning, I felt that there's some people in here and, and the God dream that you have, it, it's maybe to do something that, that takes stepping out. Maybe it's starting a business. Maybe that God dream, it's, it's nothing about work or about a profession, but it's, just, it's about family and, and you've lost that hope and you've lost that faith that, that the kids or the grandkids, that they'll be saved and it's this God dream and, and God's challenging you this morning. I felt like God wanted to challenge you today. Would you dream again? Would you have faith again? Would you hope again? Would you seek me again? Would you follow me again? I feel that there's some people today and you've been following the dream. Pursuing money, pursuing possessions, have to have the certain house, have to have the certain look and everything's gotta look a certain way. And and God's saying today, no, 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 don't worry about the dream. Don't follow the dream. Follow me, and I'm going to make the dream come true. Would you stand with me all across the room this morning? This morning, I'm wondering if there's some people in here that would say, I'm following Jesus. I wonder if there's some people in here today that would say, I don't need to follow my dreams anymore. If there's some people today, we were singing a song that says, I don't want anything but you. You're more than every dream come true. I wonder if there's some people that today that would say, you can have all the world. I just want Jesus. This morning, I wanna pray and we're gonna respond with just worshiping him today. We're gonna respond with just singing a song that I, just give me Jesus. And, and maybe we're gonna go into a song that says, even when I don't feel it, 
even when I don't see it, that I know that you're working. And today I wanna encourage some people to begin to put their trust back in Jesus. You don't have to do it. You don't have to make it happen. Would you bow your heads with me across the room? God, today I pray that we would be people that would put our trust in you. That we'd be people who look to you. God, I pray today that no longer would we follow the dreams that we have for ourselves, but we would follow you. God, I pray today for some in the room that they would begin to receive a God dream. A dream to serve, a dream to be a teacher, a dream to, to be in service, a dream to have a business. God, I pray that you would begin to work some things out in some people, that it wouldn't just be about following that dream for me, but it'd be following that dream because that's where you're leading, that we would follow you, God. God, today I pray for those in the room who've given up hope. Those in the room who maybe feel like Joseph when he was in prison, Joseph when he was in slavery, feels like God gave me this dream, but where is he now? I pray that they'd be reminded today that you're here, that you're moving, that you're working, that they'd be reminded today that I don't have to see, I don't have to know how it's gonna happen, but God is so good that he's gonna make it happen. God, today we say yes to you. Today we worship you. Come on, church, let's just respond today saying, I just want Jesus. Oh.